welcome back to the DFS Red Shop, where I am your host, V. DFS Jerusalem, and you can follow me, of course, on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Uh, today, we're going to be breaking down last night's monster 10 game slate. We're going to be talking about some of the best plays that we saw. Uh, jumping into our regular format of the show, we're going to start with our core four review. As you know, each day I issue out my personal uh, core of plays, guys that I like the most that are going to be in the bulk of my lineups. Uh, the core four kind of got all shot up to shit today because it, and just, just to talk a little bit about the slate in general. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how I approach these Russell Westbrook slates. Now, normally when I see Russell Westbrook as the only major, major stud priced up, and usually it's either him and Harden, or you might have, you know, uh, if, if you got LeBron in a nice streak of games, you're going to see him priced up above 11 K and sometimes, and, and I usually start off the slate. Uh, when those guys are singled out by themselves the way we had Westbrook today as a straight-up fade. Like, I'm not playing this dude. I'm not paying up 13-3. The slate is going to have to convince me to pay up for this guy. And by the slate convincing me, I mean uh, some values are going to have to open up somewhere. So we go through about midday to like, okay, a couple of things have opened up. I I'm going to have them somewhere. I'm going to have them. Out of the five lineups I got, I'm going to have Russell Westbrook in one of them. And then, you know, as things progress and we get more news and the Philadelphia news comes out and then we find out this guy's not going to be playing, this guy's not going to be playing. Well, by the time, you know, we jumped into the midday mix, you know, I was uh, a little bit higher on. By the time the midday mix was over and we got all of the injury news leading up into lock, I was 70% uh, Westbrook on DraftKings. I was 100% Westbrook on FanDuel, 100% on Yahoo. And it all worked uh, in our favors as I was able to six times my buy-in across three sites. Anytime that happens, that is a lovely, dope win for the DFS Sweat Shop. I got a little bit more money to play on opening day because, you know, baseball's going to be coming up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my core four review. Now, I, I got to tell you, uh, today's core four, the last couple of core fours, have been better. And I think that is attributed to a lot of the perfect lineup strategy research that we've been doing over here in the DFS Sweat Shop. It was formulated by the homie Rudy Herta. Shout out to you, man. Thank you for all the help you've been doing, man. Really helped my game a ton. Uh, we found some spots that we really wanted to target. Uh, and we're going to start uh, the core four. I started off with uh, TJ McConnell. He was in a very plus matchup, a nice spot. Uh, knew that he was going to be getting a ton of minutes with Sergio Rodriguez out. But as things turned during the day and we saw more of those guys going to be out in Philadelphia, I was more confident in that play. Uh, I believe he went out... At 5.5K, uh, the price was, was right there on him. It was a very solid price we saw on on the big homie, uh, TJ McConnell. He went out, and even though he was 50% owned in the single injury GPPs and about 20 to 30% owned uh, in the regular GPPs, he went out and scored 30.75 DraftKings points. Not a huge return, but uh, very close to that 6X value that we're looking for uh, from TJ McConnell. Very solid play there. Next guy I'll be talking about is going to be Zach Randolph. Now, I was on Zach Randolph before we got the news. Uh, that Marcus Saul was going to be out before we got the news that we weren't going to be seeing Jermichael Green. Uh, and you know what? It, it served to not be such a great play. Uh, 6.3K was his price point. Uh, he brought back 29.5 DraftKings points. Didn't kill you. Didn't kill me. But not that 6X value uh, that we hoped for. Now, DeAndre Jordan was probably my favorite, one of my favorite plays in the court. For. I love the spot that he was in. Wanted to have that late night hammer. I thought he could contend. Uh, with some of the ownership that we're going to be seeing with uh, Dwight Howard. And I wanted to go two centers in a few spots, too. So I had those guys paired up in, in a couple of lineups as well. And that proved to be a very solid strategy at 22% owned in the single HGPPs, uh about 15% owned in the smaller ones, uh, 53.5 DraftKings points of what he brought back at 6.8K. Very solid return, much more uh, than I bargained for at the, at the 6 for the 6X value point. Very solid play there. The only hiccup that I had uh, in today's core four was Vic Oladipo. Uh, he not very highly owned uh, and just didn't just didn't go out and have a, a great game. I mean, we saw an awesome game from uh, we saw an awesome game from Russ Westbrook, man, a big triple double, fifty-seven point triple double. But uh, Depot, man, even though the game went into overtime, he still was not able to really uh, make his stamp and make an impression on the game. This was supposed to be a, you know, revenge narrative for him. And I bought into that uh, in some spots. But the, the, the beautiful thing about this was I ended up being a lot uh, less on him once we found out about all of the news in Philadelphia where we were going to be seeing guys that we could get into those shooting guard spots. So I did pivot off of him in a lot of spots. Out of all the guys that were in 
uh, my core four from yesterday, he's probably the one that I had uh, the least in the least of my lives because they, when the news broke, man, I jumped all over it. At one point, I sent out a tweet on Twitter. I was like, yo, if you want to get to the money tonight, just stack Philadelphia with Russell Westbrook. That's going to be the best way to get to the cash line. Now, this core of plays uh, cost me roughly a little bit less than half of my complete uh, DraftKings salary, about 246 K was what I spent on this core four, so that was pretty good, and that was intentional because I wanted to have that salary on 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 hand if I saw that I needed to pay up for Russell Westbrook as value opened up throughout the day, and that is exactly what happened. This is one of those states that I kind of just read right. Whenever that happens, man, you really stay in the game in that in that respect. So uh, this core four totaled about 139 DraftKings points. That was good for 5.6x. Uh, if you did add uh, Russell Westbrook and a couple of Philly guys to this core. There's no doubt in my mind you were easily at that 300 mark. The cash line was a little bit higher than normal. I think it was about 280, 285 was the cash line tonight over on DraftKings. It was about 305, I believe, on FanDuel. So uh, really, really nice uh, uh, core, man. Very, very pleased about the outcome. That was pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and jump into the feature four plays of the night. These are the four most talked about, tweeted about guys in the DFS sweatshop, in the Facebook VIP, and as well as on Twitter. Now, the first play we're going to talk about is the who they scoring all them points over there play tonight. This goes out to none other than Kent Bazemore. Yes, Kent, you were dead to me at one point, my brother, but now you are alive. We revived you after the All-Star break, have given you a couple more chances, and since we have, you have not been disappointing, man. Very solid uh, uh, showing for him. I believe he was 2% owned in most spots where somebody did have him. 4K was the price point. Very solid showing. Damn near hit 10x on him. Uh, 38 uh, DraftKings points of what he scored. Uh, played 20 minutes. The minutes were restricted in some respects. He finished with 19 points, 4 boards, 4 assists, while knocking down 4 three-point shots, uh, stealing a couple, a couple of balls, and also blocking a shot. Very solid game we saw from Kent Bazemore. And you know what? This is a guy that we talked about. We highlighted in the midday mix. If you looked at the perfect lineup strategies and the things that we've been Im implementing, right, uh, the guy just popped up. This is and, and it wasn't and the Kent Bazemore play to me was not about Kent Bazemore. A lot it, with the with the work we're doing, you got to take the name off of the jersey, bro, and just see if is this guy in is, is this guy capable to to in this spot? If he, is he capable of maximizing on the fact that this team has given up so many spots on that perfect lineup? And and, and, and that's yes, yes, I, I felt he was, and we had him, man. It was a very solid showing. Uh, shout out to you, Kent Bazemore, the who that scoring all the points over there play tonight. The next play we're going to get into is going to be the how did I miss that play tonight. And I continue to miss Marvin Williams. I have, I have not gotten Martin, Marvin Williams right all year long. When I was on him, he shat the bed. And now that I've gone on this, I'm not playing Marvin Williams. This dude continues to show me that he deserves uh, for me to rush him on, on DraftKings, man. This dude is going out and playing just excellent basketball. 6.1K was the price point. 18 points, 12 boards, a nice double-double. He played 35 minutes, also got an assist, knocked down four three-point shots, and had a steal. Very solid game there, and that's why t tonight you, Mr. Marvin Williams, I'll be how did I miss that play of the night. The next guy I'm going to talk about is going to be the heat check play tonight. Now, you know what? This is no, I don't have to even talk about this shit, bro. I mean, just look at this. Look at this. And, 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 and I'm the type of cat that has been jockeying uh, or, or, you know, uh, lobbying to see James Harden win the MVP, man. And, and, and this is what you go out and do. You, you come in with, with all the pressure on you. You're the highest salary cap on the slate, 13.2K, uh, an exorbitant price on you. And you go out and damn near uh, match your highest ever scoring total with 57 points. His career high is 58. 13 boys, 11 assists, uh, knocked down, knocked down six three-point shots. Three steals. I mean, just an excellent game. The seven turnovers, we can even deal with that, man. But when you drop 99.75 DraftKings points, that is something, bro. Awesome game. Excellent game uh, from probably the guy that's going to be our MVP of this season. It's Russell Westbrook, man. Awesome, man. That's why tonight you, Mr. Westbrook, are the heat check play of the night. Now, we must talk about that one motherfucker. Hey, Jeff, what's up, man? What's happening? You know you was a motherfucking snowflake, right? You know you fucked up all the lines, right? I can't go too hard on you because you was only 7% on. That means a bunch of other motherfuckers know that you was going to be a snowflake. But I fell for that shit. 6.7K was the price on you. 
you went out and you brought back 12.25 punk ass DraftKings points. And for that, tonight, Mr. Teague, George Teague, use a motherfucking snowflake with your old snowflake ass. How the fuck do you go out when other point guards are getting it against Mike Conley? Not only does he shut you down, but he shits on you and balls out and has the greatest game he's had uh, in the second half of the season. That's why tonight, Jeff, use a motherfucking snowflake with your snowflake ass, and I ain't going to roster your bitch ass again. Now, let's get on with the rest of the motherfucking show. Now, at this point in the show, this is where I'd like to show you my very best DraftKings lineup, and I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want you to know that the guys that I'm talking about, the guys that are in my player pool, are actually the guys that I'm playing. I'm not one of those cats that are going to tell you, oh, play this guy, play this guy, oh, don't play this guy, don't play this guy, but you look and you see contrary shit in my lineup. So that's not the guy who I am. That's not who I am. I'm an ordinary, average, everyday player just like you, uh, watch a lot of NBA, I'm a profitable player, and I just want to help you get there, too. And if you're there already, I want to help you stay there. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is my very best DraftKings lineup. This lineup was a core four. It was a core four lineup through and through. And this goes to show you some of the stuff that we were talking about in the beginning of tonight's session. Uh, of course, I had TJ McConnell here, a uh, player that I liked. He was a core four cat. Zach Randolph was a core four cat. I liked him in this spot. And also DeAndre Russell. Now, you already knew how I felt about Dwight Howard. I felt that if they got him the ball in the post, got him, got him involved in the offense early and often, that we would see a very nice game from him. I had him uh, here, two center night. We talked about that in the midday mix. Uh, of course, Depot was right here in that shooting guard spot. But once all the news broke in Philadelphia and we knew that it was an all-out grab uh, for anybody in Philadelphia we thought we were going to be seeing meaningful minutes, uh, I automatically pivoted. In some spots, I pivoted to uh, Cabaru and just left him there. Uh, but I said, you know what, I'm going to roster quite a few of these guys. I'm going to get three of these cats, especially when I saw the starting lineup come out. So I had TJ McConnell already. We got Nick Stoskis in there, uh, Justin Anderson, as well as Timothy uh, Cabaru. So that means I went, I went four deep on the Philadelphia stack while still maintaining some of their integrity with some of the core plays that I did like. The only guy that I added to the mix that I had no intention of rostering uh, previously was Russell Westbrook. That's somebody that we talked about already. As you can see, uh, this is a lineup that I built in the quarter games. I make them in there first just so I can get a feel for the, for the construction of them, make sure I like them. I had it a few times, like five times in the quarter games, uh, in the high five single entry, the 4K jump shot single entry, the 4K daily dollar single entry, and I also had it in the and one. Now, my highest finish of all of those was in the high five single entries. I finished eighth place there. I was tied with about four other cats uh, for eighth place. It was a very solid showing, very pleased. Uh, this lineup finished with 344.25 DraftKings points, and yes, it was the highest scoring DraftKings uh, lineup for me on the evening. Very solid showing, very happy with that. Now, let's go ahead and jump into a brief recap of last night's games. And before we do that, before we recap the games, man, I kind of want to just share a little bit of this with you uh, here as we look at, you know, what we're looking forward to as far as uh, the ending of the season and, and how, you know, we, we, we might be able to take a look uh, and see where teams are in relation to their playoff race. As you can see, uh, Cleveland is, they've already clinched. Boston is clinched. Uh, Washington, they're in, but they're still jockeying for that first place spot. Uh, we see uh, Washington's a couple of games back. Boston is one game behind. Cleveland, you've got Atlanta here. They're still fighting for their playoff lives. It's a very close race from five all the way down to 11. Very close race. The Charlotte Hornets are still mathematically involved. They're still in it. Uh, so all of these teams, man, uh, from Atlanta on down, have a, a lot to play for right now. They do. They have a lot to play for right now. It's the positioning as well as, you know, just the chance to make it into, into the tournament. So Chicago, Indiana, Miami, Charlotte, these are teams that we can, you know, we can pluck from. We can look look to those those teams, definitely. Now, if we look in the Western Conference, of course, here you see Golden State uh, sitting in first place. We've got a, quite a few teams that's, that have clinched here. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder did clinch last night when they beat Orlando. You've got uh, the Clippers in fifth. Utah, Houston, uh, San Antonio, and Golden State. All of those teams are in. Uh, we're fighting for those last two spots. And it's it's quite a few teams that's involved. Man, we got four teams that are left. Uh, the Grizzlies, who I think are pretty safe where they're at. Uh, I don't think they're going to give up a, a four-game, five-game lead uh, to Portland or Denver. And then we've got, of course, Portland and Denver here fighting for that last spot. With New Orleans still mathematically involved in the playoff race, 
Dallas is dead. Minnesota is dead. So these are the teams that we need to you know, take a look at and talk. Those guys are going to be playing very hard. Memphis, Portland, Denver, and New Orleans, all of those guys are still in playoff contention. So those are teams that we definitely need to look forward to if we just want a roster, you know, cats that have that want to, uh, that urge to go out and play very well so that they can uh, make the playoffs. So those are what we're going to be looking at going forward down the stretch. We've got about seven to eight more games left in the regular season. Then we'll be jumping right into the playoffs. Baseball's right there. So it's a lot of stuff going on, man. A lot of stuff going on. So like I, like I like to say, if you need a DFS home, a place where you can come and learn or come and teach and come and just be a part of and be active in, hit us up in the DFS Sweatshop, man. It's www.dfssweatshop.com. That is where we are. That is where I want you to be. Now, let's go ahead and jump into a brief recap of last night's games. Big 10 game statements on tap, and we are going to start. Uh, right where it all started, man, uh, we're going to be going over the Atlanta Hawks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, this is a very entertaining game, man. The game kind of did come down to, to the last, to, to the last, the ending of the game. It was, it, was a, it was a very entertaining game through and through, man. And on the Atlanta side, big game we saw from the homie uh, Dwight Howard, 22 and 20, two with four assists and one block. Very solid game from him. Uh, Ersan Ilyasova in 32 minutes had 14 and three, two with three assists and also blocked the shot. Uh, we saw Tim Hardaway Jr. for 36 minutes. He had 19 and three with one assist. Not a great game there from him. Kent Bazemore, the who that scored all them points over there, played tonight. Of course, we looked at him already in 19 minutes. He had 19 points, four boards, four assists, two steals, and one block shot. Pretty solid game from him. Uh, on the Philadelphia side, really nice game we saw from Rashawn Holmes in 31 minutes. He had 25 points, eight boards, one assist, one steal, and one block. Uh, only saw 16 minutes of Sean Long, so I think that's pretty much dead. He had 10 points, one board, and one assist. Not a great game there. TJ McConnell in 37 minutes had 13 and 3, two with eight assists and two steals. And we saw uh, TLC for 32 minutes. He only had five points, but he had 10 rebounds and four assists. Also blocked the shot. Pretty solid game there from him. Uh, Could have shot the ball a lot better. Could have shot the ball a lot better. Only went two for 10 from the field. Dario Saric really disappointed in this game. And he led the team in minutes. He played 39 minutes. He only had 15 points, seven boards, and four assists. Uh, with a block shot, we knew uh, coming in that we weren't going to be seeing Robert Covington. He was out due to right knee discomfort, had a little swelling there. Didn't see Julio Okafor with a right knee soreness. Sergio Rodriguez is out with a left hamstring strain. And, of course, Thiago Splitter did not play due to a coach's decision. So, next game I'm going to talk about is the Oklahoma City Thunder going to Orlando to take on the Magic. This was an incredible performance to watch, man. It was just, It was just so dope. To watch this dude go out and just totally destroy uh, the Orlando Magic. Not that I don't like the Magic, but just this just dude's like a fucking wrecking ball, man. And he, he's an awesome, awesome player. And the, 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 this is the beauty of this. The best thing about Westbrook to me is now the old heads can't throw up Oscar Robinson in your face all the time. Anytime you talk about, oh, the best player, well, you, you don't forget about Oscar Robinson, man. He, he, we can forget about that because this dude is, he's on pace. I think he's going to break. Oscar Robinson's record for triple doubles in the season, man. He can definitely do it. If anybody can, he's on pace. Uh, 41 minutes we saw from Russell Westbrook. He, he checked play tonight. He had 57 points, 13 boards, 11 assists, 3 steals, while shooting 21 of 40 from the field. He took 15 three-point shots and knocked down 6 of them, got to the line 11 times, and converted 9 of those tries and points. Very solid game there. Enos Cantor in 20 minutes off of the bench had 17 and 10. A very solid performance from him. Vic Oladipo, man, disappointed at 43 minutes. 13 and 5 with one assist, one steal, and one block. The dude played the entire fucking game and just could not put it together, bro. Steven Adams in 29 minutes has 7 and 9 to go with two blocks. Not a great game from him. And uh, Andrew Robinson uh, in 35 minutes had 6 and 9 to go with three assists, one steal, and two blocks. Pretty solid game for him at that price point. On the Orlando side, uh, Terrence Ross had a nice game scoring the ball. In 45 minutes, he had 23 points, one rebound, two assists, and one steal. Uh, also blocked the shot. Shot 52% from the field, hit five of 11 three-point shots. Very solid shooting game we saw from Terrence Ross. Uh, Nikolai Vucevic in 32 minutes had a double-double. It was kind of small. 11 points, 16 boards, one assist, and one steal. Also had a couple blocked shots. Pretty good game from him. Uh, really nice game we saw from Evan Fournier. In 40 minutes, he had 24 points, six boards, five assists, and one steal while shooting 40% from the field. Hit three of three free throws and three of eight three-point shots. Bismack Biambo got busy off of the bench. In 20 minutes, he had 12 points, 11 boards, two assists, and two block shots while shooting 71% from the field. Did not see a hell of a great game from Alfred Payton in 37 minutes. He had 11 points, 
six boards and eight assists. Uh, also blocked the shot in his 37 minutes. Next game to talk about is the Boston Celtics at home defending the crib against the Milwaukee Bucks, man. And, and Milwaukee Bucks is a scary team during the playoffs, bro. Uh, I think I think they can win a first-round matchup. Uh, depending on who they're matched up with, I think they can win a first-round matchup. Uh, Chris Middleton, he played 34 minutes and had 19 points, six boards, five assists, two steals, and one block, and continues to be a guy that I just cannot get right. To be honest, in 33 minutes, had 22 and 9, doing three assists, three steals, and three blocks while shooting 47% from the field. Pretty decent game from him. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon was actually the player of this game, man. In 28 minutes, he had 16 points, four boards, nine assists, and one steal. Also blocked the shot and shot 58% from the field. Very solid game there. And Greg Monroe in 26 minutes had 16 and 8, doing three assists and one steal. On the Boston side, man, we finally saw a, a nicer game uh, or a nice couple of games in a row. Uh, from Isaiah Thomas, man. He played 36 minutes, and he dropped 32 points. Also had five rebounds, four assists, and three steals. He shot 52% from the field, hit all nine free throws, and shot five of nine from behind the arc. Very solid game there. Marcus Smart, in his 29 minutes over the bench, had 11 and 11, with five assists and one steal. Also blocked the shot. And Avery Bradley played 36 minutes, and he was priced down at 5.7 on DraftKings. So this was a very solid game. He had 12 points. 10 boards, 2 assists, and 2 steals uh, while shooting 5 of 14 from the field. Not a great shooting game for him, uh, but very solid uh, all-around game. Jay Crowder in 36 minutes had 13 and 2, 2 with 3 assists while shooting 33% from the field. Didn't see a great the all, fantasy game from Al Horford, but it was a solid game. And in, in 34 minutes, he had 11 points, 6 boards, 6 assists, 1 steal uh, while shooting 4 of 9 from the field. We needed him to take more shots and knock more down, but it was a very, uh, very good game close to the very end. Malcolm Brogdon kind of sealed the deal with a step back uh, floater, uh, step back jumper fading away uh, to go ahead and block that game up. Next game we're talking about is the Toronto Raptors at home against the Charlotte Hornets. And the Hornets won this game, bro. They went to Charlotte and won this game. And, you know, that does, says a lot for them, you know, still think that they have a shot uh, to make it into the playoffs and playing the best basketball that they can. So Marvin Williams was a really great play in this game, 18 and 12 with one assist and one steal. Uh, we also talked a little bit about Kimber Walker. I uh, wasn't really on him, man. I, I, I just don't like to rush the Kimber away from the Beehive unless he's in a super duper matchup. And, and the price was pretty low on him, and it felt like a trap. So I ended up being zero Kimber. I had no Kimber. I ended up having, not having Kimber at all. I did have him in a couple spots, and then the Philadelphia news broke, and I kind of got off of him to pay down and, and to move some stuff around because I needed to get Westbrook in my lineup. So Kimber, he scored 19 points, uh, four rebounds, two assists. Shot 28% from the field with 7 of 25 shooting, bro. And when Kemba is not shooting the ball well, that's what you're going to get. Marco Bellinelli, very nice play in 27 minutes. He had 21 points, leading the team in scoring. Also had 5 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block. I kind of like Nick, Nick Batum, man, but this just didn't come out for, for him today. In 27 minutes, he had 15 and 40 with 3 assists and 1 steal. Not a great game there from him. Frank Kaminsky in 19 minutes off of the bench had 13 and 4 to go with 2 assists and did not see much uh, uh, scoring. From Cody Zeller. Actually, the dude had zero fucking points. Six rebounds and four assists. Not a great game for him at all. On the Toronto Raptors side, DeMar DeRozan continues to attempt to carry the team. Now, he did some things in the way of peripheral stats, but we needed to get that scoring up in order for him to really crush value. In 38 minutes, he had 28 points, six boards, eight assists. A really solid game there. Check out Jonas Valanciunas with a big double-double, 14 and 15 to go with the steal and three blocks. Didn't we talk? We talked about Jonas in the midday mix. Uh, he was a guy that I really liked. I really liked that guy. Corey Joseph, we talked about him as well in the midday mix. In 34 minutes, he had 18 and 7 to go with five assists, two steals, and two blocks. A very solid game there. P.J. Tucker, 22 minutes, had six points, three boards, one assist. Not a great game from him at all. Next game I'm going to be talking about is my New York Knicks getting their ass whipped at the hands of the Miami Heat. And you know what? It's just, I, I'm, I'm tired of ranting about the Knicks. Man, fuck the Knicks. But I'm a Knicks fan. I'm sorry. Uh, Miami Heat, uh, pretty good scoring game we saw from Gordon Dragic. 27, 20 points, 7 rebounds, 9 assists, and 2 steals in 34 minutes. Very solid game there. Uh, a lot left to be desired from Hassan Whiteside. 28 minutes, he had 11 points, 9 boards, 1 assist, also blocked 4 shots. Not a great game at all. Uh, James Johnson? Off of the bench, 27 minutes, had 18 and 7, two with four assists, three steals, and two blocks. And I brought up a point about this as we were in the mix because we knew that due to some of our perfect lineup strategy stuff, we could roster uh, heavily 
at the center spot against the New York Knicks. We 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 knew that. And what I was thinking was, yo, uh, I don't think that we have to pay up for Hassan Whiteside. I didn't like I didn't really like him and Gobert as much as I liked the guys that were cheaper. So my thinking was maybe we can take a shot on James Johnson, and that proved to be a really solid strategy. Uh, Tyler Johnson off of the bench in 30 minutes had 12 and 7. He was one assist, not a great game there from him. Uh, on the New York Knicks side, Melo, bro, what the fuck happened? Melo did not hit a shot the first quarter, bro. He did horrible game. In 28 minutes, he had 9 and 7 with one assist. He might have just shot up, shot up the game, not even played. Uh, Guillermo Hernan Gomez in 22 minutes had 12 and 90 with one assist. Uh, nobody played well. Chris Asporzingis in 35 minutes had 20 points, 8 boards, and 2 assists. Three blocks also, but nobody from the Knicks played particularly well. And that's why they got shelled. Uh, 105 to 88. The next game we're talking about was very similar circumstances at the beginning of the game. Indiana Pacers going to, to the grindhouse to take on the Memphis Grizzlies, and Paul George didn't get it going early like he had been. Uh, in 36 minutes, he had 22 points, three boards, four assists, two steals, and two blocks. Not horrible, didn't kill you, but just not one of those Paul George games we have been seeing over the last few. Dad Young, very nice game. I knew this game was coming, and I've been on him for the last couple of days. Uh, last couple of states I've been on him and has not been been there. And I got off of him and he went out and he pulled down 13 boards, scored 16 points, uh, dished out three dimes, and also had a steal. Pretty good game we saw from him and shot 66% from the field. Miles Turner, horrible, nine and five with one assist and one block. Uh, Aaron Brooks off of the bench in 28 minutes, played a lot of scrub love. He had 18 and two with one assist and one steal. And CJ Miles peaked his head in this game and knocked down <laughs> a few shots, had 15 points, three rebounds, and two assists in his 24 minutes. On the Memphis Grizzlies side, we talked a lot about stacking uh, Mike Conley uh, with with uh, uh, Zach Randolph. And that proved to not be, you know, uh, great for Conley, but just not very good for Zach Randolph. In 24 minutes, he had 17 and 6 to go with three assists and one steal. Mike Conley, on the other hand, played 37 minutes. He had 36 points, three rebounds, six assists, and four steals. He hit 13 of 21 shots from the field for 61% and knocked down seven of 12 three-point shots. Very solid game we saw from Mike Conley. He's going to do that from time to time. James Ennis in 32 minutes had 7 and 10 to go with two assists and two steals. Uh, you know that we didn't see Marcus Gasol or Jermichael Green in this game. We got a heavy dose of Brandon Wright in 27 minutes. He had 13 and 4 to go with one assist and two block shots. Pretty good game there at that price point. Next game we're talking about is the New Orleans Pelicans at home taking on the Dallas Mavericks. And you know, the funny thing about this game is I always say and there's no way, it's hard for me to choose which one of these guys I can play? Do I play Boogie? Do I play AD? AD is made of glass. He's going to get hurt at some point. He's going to go to the locker room. I don't know what to do. Blah, 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 blah. And you know what happened, man? We just went out, and, and, and you could have rostered both of the motherfuckers in this game. They had an excellent game. But we're going to start on the Dallas Mavericks side, where I had an inclination that we were going to see a solid game from Harrison Barnes. In 33 minutes, he had 19 and 8 to go three assists. A guy that I was completely off, did not want any part of, was Dirk Nowitzki, and that proved to be a bad decision on my part. In 31 minutes, he had 23 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, also blocked the shot. Very good game we saw from him. Uh, Lil Bra in 33 minutes had 18 and 2 to go 3 assists and 1 steal. And we saw Yogi Ferrell for 23 minutes. He had 15 and 3 with 1 assist, 1 steal, and 1 block. We saw JJ Barea off of the bench for 19 minutes. He chipped in 8 points, uh, had 2 rebounds, and dished out 11 assists. Man, you could have... Between Philadelphia and this... Like, you could have really done well, bro. Between Philadelphia and Dallas, you could have really done well. On the New Orleans Pelican side, big game we saw from uh, DeMarcus Cousins in 39 minutes. He had 29 points, 16 boards, 6 assists. Also blocked the shot. Very solid game there. Anthony Davis in 35 minutes had 30 points, 13 boards, 2 assists, and 2 steals. Also blocked the shot while shooting 52% from the field. Very solid game there. And we saw uh, Dante Cunningham and Jamal Crawford. Not Jamal, but Jordan Crawford. Uh, 20 minutes for Cunningham, 15 and 2 with two steals, and Crawford had 15 and one rebound with four assists. Very solid games uh, for those guys that were cheaply priced. Next game we're gonna talk about San Antonio Spurs uh, defending home court against the Golden State Warriors. This was not as entertaining a game as we all thought it was gonna be, and I'm so glad that I pulled out a lot of the investment that I had as far as my my, my DraftKings dollars or my FanDuel dollars went. And just went and said, fuck it, I'm just going to play Russell, Russell Westbrook. I'm just going to play Westbrook. And uh, Matt Barnes got the start. He was supposed to be laying the clamps on the claw. Uh, not very effective in 25 minutes. Three points, five assists, and four steals. Uh, we saw Clay Thompson 
for 35 minutes, had 23 points, two rebounds, one block shot. Not a great game from him. And Steph Curry in 35 minutes had 29 points, dished out 11 assists, had three rebounds, and also had a steal. Uh, not a great game, but he didn't kill you if you had him. Uh, Andre Iguodala in 30 minutes had 14 and 60 with one assist and two steals. Pretty solid game from him. And David West. What the fuck? Did, where did David West come from? The dude went out and just went shack on him. In like 21 minutes, he had 15 points, four rebounds, five assists, two block shots. He shot 63% from the field, uh, hit one three-point shot. Very solid game we saw from David West in the spot, man. Awesome stuff there. Uh, on the San Antonio side, Kawhi Leonard, he played 35 minutes. I did not want to pay up for him at all at 9.9. That's just, I just could not get there. I'm glad I didn't try. 19 points, 7 boards, 5 assists, and 1 steal while shooting 35% for the field. That's what did him in. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, 17 and 6 in his 34 minutes. We saw Danny Green for 30 minutes. He had 16 and 6 to go with 3 assists and 2 steals and knocked down 4 of 60 point shots. Pretty good game there. And Paul Gasol, man, was a really solid play. He popped up in a lot of my models uh, yesterday, man, uh, and I just didn't want to play. And that, that was a bad call for me, man. 25 minutes, he had 18 and 8 to go with 5 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block. Very solid game there. Next game we're going to be talking about is the <clears throat> Washington Wizards uh, going to L.A. to take on the Clippers. This game could have been a blowout. It could have been a blowout. But you know what? John Wall just was not having it. He did not let this team, you know, fall so far behind that, you know, the game didn't stay close down the stretch. And thank you, John Wall, because I needed that. I had DeAndre Jordan everywhere. Very nice game we saw from John. In 38 minutes, he had 41 points, 7 boards, 8 assists, 3 steals, while shooting 69% from the field. And that happened because he just attacked the basket. John Wall was in attack mode. I mean, he did have his fair share of jump shots, but for the most part, he was challenging the L.A. Clipper front court in the paint. I mean, I'm talking about possession after possession, challenging him in the paint and winning a lot of those challenges. Uh, very solid game there. Kelly Ubi Jr. in 24 minutes had 10 and 6 to go with two steals. Otto Porter, what the fuck is up with Otto Porter? In 24 minutes, the dude had four points, two rebounds, two assists, and one steal. Not a good game at all. And this is a guy that at one point in the season was dropping 70. Like, this is crazy to see him, you know, play this bad. Marquise Morris uh, played 14 minutes, got kicked out of this game, 14-4, uh, and four, not a great game there. Bradley Beal chipped in 27 real-life points, but he only had four assists aside from that. Not a great game uh, scoring the basketball and doing the other things peripheral that we need to see in order for a guy like that to make value. And the Clippers side, uh, Blake Griffin, man, damn it, chip a double dog. And he was priced down, 7.9, but the perfect lineup research told us that you attack Washington. Washington. On our list, Washington was the number one team to attack at the power forward spot. And, 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 and that's crazy. Like, this is it's eerie how on point this shit is, man. It's eerie, bro. Uh, Blake Griffin priced down at 7.9, played 39 minutes, had 26 points, 10 boards, 9 assists, and 2 steals. We saw an excellent game from him as well as DeAndre Jordan. Uh, we talked about him as a core four guy. 38 minutes for him. He had 23 and 18. He was one assist, one steal, and two blocks. We saw a really nice game from Chris Paul, too, in 37 minutes. He had 27 points, three boards, 13 assists, and one steal. Didn't have to see much else from everybody off of the bench. Uh, aside from Jamal Crawford, he had 14 points, one rebound, and three assists to go with a steal. But J.J. Redick, bro, he led the team in scoring. And the funny shit about this. Okay, so, J oh, J.J. is questionable. Okay, cool. So I'm not playing J.J. Uh, Austin Rivers could start for JJ. All right, cool. I'm, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the coach's son. Well, right, right uh, before lock or right after lock. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, when it happened. Oh no, JJ Redick is gonna play. All right, cool. So I got Austin Rivers in a few spots for fucking nothing. So to compound that, not only does this dude go out and knock down seven of 11 threes and lead the team in scoring with 31 points, the coach's son gets injured. <laughs> and only plays eight minutes in the game and not even going to be able to play uh, tonight. So horrible. That was crazy. An, an unfortunate turn of events. So at the half, as, you know, uh, as Redick is, like, kicking the shit out of the Washington Wizards uh, backcourt, just knocking down rain and threes, the lady asked him at the half, so, uh, you know, he has some injury concerns. He's like, oh, yeah, I feel fine. Who is reporting this shit to us? Who was reporting an injury news to us, bro? It's crazy. It is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. On the next game we're talking about, and the last game on the slate, 
we had a couple of late night hammer games that started at 1030. It was the Clippers in Washington. Then this game, Utah Jazz going to Sacramento. This game was a drubbing as I felt it would be. I uh, didn't have much invest in this game. I thought that, you know, uh, well, once I thought about it, that Rudy Gobert was priced up so high on FanDuel at 9.1. And I started to think, I was like, damn, he's only 500 less on DraftKings. And you've got Dwight Howard in the dream spot. Uh, you've got uh, DeAndre Jordan. I, I'm not paying for that. So I didn't pay him, I didn't play him anywhere on DraftKings. But I did play him on Yahoo because he was like 32 bucks on Yahoo. And that wasn't bad at all. So I did play him on Yahoo. That was that, and, and see, that's the, the point. That's the reason why, I, even if you're not going to be a full-time, if you say, I like, I, just, I just like DraftKings, okay, cool. Well, throw five bucks or ten bucks on FanDuel. Throw, throw ten bucks in Yahoo. And that should be just enough for you to gauge from site to site if you're going to be getting value. Because there's going to be some time when you can say, yo, I'll pay for this on DraftKings, but I'm not paying for that shit on FanDuel. And if you say that enough in the same slate, you end up rostering a, a slate of guys that you really feel comfortable with because, you know, it's a price that you can agree is good. So that's why I would suggest, yeah, you may have your primary site you play on, but all the money is here for us to take, baby. It's all here for us to take, baby. So go ahead and throw, throw, throw a little dub here, throw a dub there, and, and just, you know, play lightly. That way, you can hedge your bet sometime. That's what I was able to do. It just so happened that I went nuts. I went crazy, panicked, and just put Russell Westbrook in every fucking lineup that I had on FanDuel and on uh, on uh, Yahoo, and, and it all worked out well for me. But, yeah, do that, man. It's, it's a good way to hedge your bets. Uh, check it out. The Utah side, the visiting team. Uh, Gordon Hayden went to the locker room twice in this game. In 32 minutes, he had 20 points, 7 boards, 4 assists. Very solid game from him. Uh, Boris Diaw. In 18 minutes, had 11 and 3 to go, 3 assists. Rudy Gobert, big double double, but just not big enough to cover that 8.6 uh, uh, K price tag on DraftKings. 16 points, 15 boards, did not get an assist, a steal, or even block a shot. And when Rudy Gobert is not blocking shots, and I think a lot of that was due to the fact that Sacramento was just scared to go down there. They were shooting jumpers, they were fading away. Nobody really tried to challenge him and attack him in the post because they knew what was going to happen. He was going to send that shit back. So that was very unfortunate that he didn't have you know, a lot of block opportunities. Uh, Rodney Hood in 23 minutes. I liked them all day long. 18 and one to go, two assists and two steals. Uh, Sheldon Mack got the start in place of the injured uh, George Hill, and he in 28 minutes had 14 and four to go, one assist, one steal. Pretty solid game for him at that price point. Joe Ingles had a nice one, 12 and two to go, five assists and two steals. And even Joe Johnson in 23 minutes got into the action. He had nine points, three boards, three assists, and two steals to go with a block shot. Pretty good game from him at that price point. On the Sacramento side, uh, Ben McLemore was the only sign of life that this team showed. In 27 minutes, he had 22 points, 4 rebounds, and 1 assist. Uh, Darren Carlson, not a good game. 22 minutes, he had 12 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist, and 1 steal. I uh, didn't see a ton of stuff from uh, Tyreek Evans in 24 minutes. He had 9 and 3 to go with 1 assist and 2 steals. And Scott LaVissier in 32 minutes had 9 points, 7 boards, and 2 assists to go with a steal and a block. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some player pricing as we examine the point totals for today. It is only a five-game slate, so my suggestion to you would be to play lightly. That's my suggestion all around, going this close to the playoffs. So play lightly. Uh, you don't want to throw away your baseball money because baseball opening day is coming, and we are going in. So let's go ahead and check out some player pricing. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look <clears throat> at some of the slate recognition. Uh, and this was very helpful to me uh, the other night when I made uh, my very best lineup was made in the turbo and I threw the bitch in the main. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this, man. I want you to take take a look at this because it's only a five game slate tomorrow. We've got a two game turbo here that starts at eight as well as a two game uh, late that's at 10 o'clock. So you can make lineups in the late, make lineup in the turbo and throw the bitches in the main. Let's take a look at the couple of games that we're going to have here just to see if those games are going to be juicy enough. Now, uh, the 2 o'clock turbo, excuse me, the, excuse me, the uh, 8 o'clock turbo, the two-gamer, uh, that's going to be Cleveland and Chicago and L.A. and Minnesota. Juicy. That's juicy enough, bro. The only game you're going to be missing, you're going to be missing uh, from the mains, you're going to be missing Brooklyn, Detroit, uh, L.A., Phoenix, the Clippers and Phoenix, and Houston and Portland. So you do give up that Houston and Portland game, but if you don't like the turbos there, hop in the late because you're going to get the Clippers and Phoenix and Houston and Portland where you can make a lineup here and throw it in the main. Uh, definitely do that. That is a very good strategy. I'm telling you, it definitely works. Uh, uh, 
just try it. Just try it. It works. It happens. It happens all the time. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some player pricing. Uh, we're gonna do this just so that we can, you know, have a look at what we what we can expect as far as salaries go. Because the first guy you see here is gonna be James Harden, priced up at twelve point four. You know how I feel about this. I'm I'm not playing right now. I'm not playing James Harden. I'm fading. The slate is gonna have to convince me to play. James Harden because look at the drop off from 12.4 down to 10.9 is the next you're going to see in Carl Anthony Towns and I do like him in his spot against the LA Lakers definitely we can, we can look at that uh, LeBron at 10.1 yes you got LeBron at 10.1 oh yeah I like that I like that see so right now I don't even see the need to pay up right now uh, as things stand for James Harden so I do like a LeBron at 10.1 no but I'm not there's no way in hell I'm paying 10k for Jimmy Butler I'm not no I'm not doing it. Damian Lillard, 9.2. Yes, we can get behind that. Chris Paul, 8.6. The price is up. Are we going to see a full run of minutes for Chris Paul tomorrow? Uh, they are on the back-to-back. -back. It's a chance they might even rest. They've already made the playoffs. They don't have much of us to play for. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be fucking with that. Blake Griffin is priced 8.1. Uh, that may be a little bit too much for me as well. Andre Drummond, uh, I'd see him at 8K against the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, no, no. I, I would rather, rather have... Uh, Brolo in that spot. Brolo destroys drum. I'd rather have Brolo. Nurkic is finally up uh, to 8K, and that's not something I think I'm going to be paying for in the main. Uh, maybe in the turbo. Maybe in the turbo. Kyrie Irving at 7.9. I do like that price point on him, definitely. Rick Rubio, 7.8. Yes, give me some of that. Uh, I do like uh, CJ McCollum at 7.6. Uh, TJ Warren at 7.5. The player that I definitely think uh, we can take a look at. Kevin Love, 7.3. I like that. D'Angelo Russell has been playing very well lately. I think he can ball uh, against uh, uh, Ricky Rubio. I don't have a problem there at all. 7.2. Give me some of that. Tyler Eulis. You just, just play him because he's going to play 40 fucking minutes. Just play him. Devin Booker's question will probably should play. If he does play, uh, we can attack those guys at that shooting guard spot. I think I do have a soft spot in my wallet for uh, Devin Booker. Uh, Wiggins, man, he's been very disappointing lately. Uh, but I think I, this is a get-right get game for him. Uh, neither one of these teams are playing for anything. But being a young team that's on the rise and who want to showcase their skills. So uh, you'll roster these guys with, 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 with great caution. I do like Brook Lopez at 7K tomorrow. He's a player that I definitely can look at. DeAndre Jordan as well at 6.9. Uh, the price bumped up 100 on him. If they all play, I think I will take advantage of that. Judas Randle is now priced down which makes him considerable for me at 6.7. Yeah, definitely. Rajon Rondo is up 6.6. .6. Uh, you know what? You know, uh, all, all signs say, man, you can, you can, you can target Kyrie defense, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I have to take a look at that. Yeah, he's in play. He's in play. Definitely. Yeah. Rondo's in play. Jordan Clarkson, yes, he's in play at 6.4. Uh, probably going to be matched up against Brandon Rush. I don't, I'm not scared of that at all. Uh, Jamie Lynn deserves consideration. No Ish Smith for me at 6.1. Uh, that's too just price too much for me. I don't want that. Tobias Harris is in play at 6K. I kind of like that. Uh, Gorgi Jane, yes, at 5.9. Uh, no, no Miratic for me tomorrow. I'm not on Miratic. Um, Trevor Ariza is a play that I think we can look to. Uh, it's kind of rough to, to target uh, the Portland Trailblazers on the wing because they're so bad on the perimeter at the point guard, shooting guard spot that, you know, where they make up for it is by solid perimeter defense on the wing. So Trevor Ariza... Gonna be a play that I'm gonna have to look a little bit closely at. Uh, I do like Clint Capella at 5.6. Hollis Jefferson has been playing some pretty good ball lately. We can look at him. Uh, Sweet Lou Williams. Uh, yeah, give me some Lou Williams. Marquis Chris at 5.4. I like that the price is down on him some. He deserves consideration. Eric Gordon is a no for me. Uh, I'm gonna play Contavious Caldwell Pope tomorrow. He owes me money at 5.2. I am ready to collect. Uh, Marcus Morris is a play that I do like. Zubak at 5K deserves consideration. Uh, Alan Williams is cheap, bro. 5K for Allen Williams is cheap. If he knows a Clipper guy's risk, I think we can take a look at Allen Williams. Pat Bev at 4.9 is a play that I'm very interested in, especially uh, matched up against uh, that, that Portland uh, pretty bad DVP against the point guard position. I can take a shot there. Uh, Brandon Ingham, if he does play, uh, I do like him at 4.8 if he does play. Reggie Jackson is a no for me. Uh, Robin Lopez at 4.7, oh, unless something changes. Unless something changes. Right now, no. Robin Lopez, 4.7. Uh, he is dead to me. I don't even want to hear Robin. I don't care. I'm not playing him. I don't care. 
I don't care. Matter of fact, I'm playing the guy against him. Alex Lynn, yes, at 4.7. You can give me some of that. I do like Larry Nance tomorrow. Uh, Sean Kilpatrick, no for me. Alfred Camino is in play at 4.5, definitely. Give me some of that Tristan Thompson, baby, at 4.4. Pour him all over me. Uh, I like Alan Crabb at 4.3. I think he's can be a solid play off of the Portland bench. And J.J. Reddick has been playing uh, lights out, been shooting the ball. And I like. I think he does it in, in a few game stretches. So I will take a shot on J.J. Reddick tomorrow uh, if he is playing. John Lewis does deserve consideration. He started the game over Tobias Harris last time out. If that happens again, I'm going to get me some John Lohr in my lineups. Nene at 4.2, not a player that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, Jared Dudley is a no for me. Trevor Booker, no. Uh, Vonley, yes, I like some Vonley. No zipster for me. Uh, of course, you know Dwayne Wade's going to be out. Bobby Portis is interesting uh, at 4K. Maybe a player that we can look at. I like Chris Dunn. He's going to be seeing a ton of minutes down the stretch. I think they'd like to get him some game experience. I like Chris Dunn, Mark 3.9. As well as Denzel Valentine. I kind of like that spot too. Because, you know, it's a five game state. We have to find some value to separate ourselves somewhere. Some guys that are going to be less old. And I think you're going to get that around this, you know, 4K or less range. Because there's so many guys at 4K that could be solid plays that it's just our duty, it's our job to find the ones that we think are going to be in the best spot. So Jamal Crawford at 3.9, yes, especially if somebody sits. Uh, Harkless, 3.9, yes. Shabazz Muhammad at 3.8, yes, but I do like uh, Dunn a little bit more. Maurice Spade to somebody says, I have a I have a real feeling that somebody might sit in this game. So uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, Karis Devert, yes, 3.6. Yeah, give me that. Uh, Sam Deckard, yes. Like th th there's a lot of guys down here that we can we can actually use uh to separate ourselves in those tournaments, man. So uh, let's go ahead and, and, and talk about the point totals very quick. I'm gonna be highlighting guys that I see that I should add to my personal player pool. Of course. Uh, this is a five-game slate, so I am going to be stacking. I'm going to find the offense that I like the most, and most of my lot, my roster builds are going to be based off stacks. I'm, I, need, I need to find a core stack, a core uh, a stack plays that I do like, an offense that I'm going to roll with. And the first thing that's jumping off the page to me is telling me uh, rock with a Cleveland stack. First thing I'm getting, it's the first thing I'm getting, just my feel for the slate. But let's go ahead and start uh, in Brooklyn, excuse me, in Detroit, with the Brooklyn Nets coming to town. This is a 213 point total with the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, uh, giving uh, getting six points. So the Pistons are a home favorite. They're giving up six points. There's a small, slim chance that Detroit can make the playoffs. So I think they're going to come to play as much as as much as being a Detroit Piston means coming to play. They're going to they're going to come as hard as the, uh, they can come. And I think that uh, that's solid. So I do like I do think I, I caught Contavious Caldwell Pope tomorrow. He's one of the players I do like. I think John Lewis is somebody that we can look at. At 109.5, we don't have to rush it straight to the studs. We can look at some of the helpers. Uh, Andre Drummond is definitely considerable. At 8K, he's priced up a little bit, but, I mean, he's considerable. Uh, in, in this type of matchup, you can take a look at him. I probably won't pull the trigger there. And Ish Smith is considerable at 6.1. On a five-game slate, there's not too many places you can go, so I will add him to my initial player pool just to, just to take a look at that. And, uh, Marcus Morris also. At 5.1, very cheap price on him. I kind of like that spot for him. Uh, on the Brooklyn side, Jeremy Lin deserved consideration at 6.2. That probably would be the pivot off of a guy like Ish Smith, very similarly priced. I love Brook Lopez. I will have some of him. I think Ronnie Hollis Jefferson deserved consideration as well as Karis Levert. And maybe if we look to uh, the Brooklyn bench, somebody like uh, Isaiah Whitehead at 3.4 could be a cheap salary saving option. Somebody we can use to separate ourselves. And you might want to take a look at Sean Kilpatrick and Spencer Dinwiddie. Next game we're talking about is going to be the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, going to Chicago to take on uh, the Bulls. The Cleveland Cavs are giving up five and a half points. This is a 210 point total. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers implied team total at 107.8. Automatically, give me give me the big three. Actually, give me four. I like Tristan, Kevin, uh, Kyrie, and LeBron. I'm going to be stacking some Cleveland tomorrow. And if I want to look to the bench because it's 107.8 point total, I think this game, you know, could get away. Uh, we could see some solid scoring from off of the bench as well. And uh, Richard Jefferson being a game time decision, as well as Kyle Korver being out and Iman Shepard being a game time decision, makes me want to take a look at uh, either well, Darren Williams and or Channing Fry. The guys I'm going to be taking a look at as well. I'm going to add those cats to my initial player pool, which is going to be cut. Which is going to be cut in, in some respects. So, on the Chicago side, uh, Jimmy Butler, no, I'm not paying for Jimmy Butler. I'm just not doing it. Uh, Rajon Rondo kind of intrigues me there. Uh, maybe some Bobby Porras, Denzel Valentine for the cheap. 
uh, that would be all that I really like. From this. I'm, not, I'm not playing 10K for Jimmy Butler. I'm going to get standard. Next game we're talking about is the LA Clippers going to Minnesota to take on uh, the Timberwolves. Remember, these guys are not playing for anything. Actually, they're both playing to lose to get the most lottery balls to get the best player in the draft. Remember that. So D'Angelo Russell jumps off of the page at 7.2. I like the spot for him. I think Julius Randle is in play. Maybe some Jordan Clarkson. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be on the Vika Zubac. Uh, this is a solid center matchup for him. He's at 5K. They want to get the young kid minutes. We can take a look there. And as well as Larry Nance could be somebody that we might want to take a look at. Now, Tyler Ennis has been getting a ton of run, uh, especially when games blow out. Especially when the games blow out. And he may be playing for, like, you know, some minutes uh, on his team next year. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, on the Minnesota side, the big three is automatically in play. Uh, it's a 220-point total uh, with the Minnesota Timberwolves giving up 10.5 points. So they are projected to really smash the Lakers. So uh, you can curb your enthusiasm when it comes to all three of the big three. We talk about uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Ricky Rubio, and Andrew Wiggins. I think a lot of that scoring is going to come from the help guys, guys like Gorgie Jang, uh, guys like Chris Dunn. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad will probably get into the action some. Maybe even some Omri Caspi and some scrub love. So, you know, I'm highlighting six deep on the Minnesota side. Uh, next game we're talking about is the LA Clippers going to Phoenix to take on the Suns. There is not yet a point total or a spread release for this game. Uh, we know that Austin Rivers will probably not play tonight uh, on the Phoenix side. Uh, Devin Booker is a game time decision as is Leandro Barbosa, Eric Bledsoe, and Brandon Knight, of course, are out. And they're not even listing Tyson Chandler on this team sheet anymore. So that's a... So, uh, let's say, first scenario, if all the Clippers come to play, uh, I mean, you can play those guys, man. You can play uh, Paul and Griffin. Uh, my main target is going to be DeAndre Jordan if they all play, and J.J. Redick. Those will be the two guys that I kind of like the most. Jamal Crawford off of the bench, maybe. And without Austin Rivers, without Coach's son, you're probably going to see a little bit more minutes for uh, Raymond Felton and even Maurice Spates if something happens and he decides to sit some guys. On the Phoenix side, Tyler Eulis is definitely a play at 7.2. Uh, TJ Warren at 7.5 is a play that I kind of like there. I do like Alex Lynn. Uh, Marcus Chris is interesting, but I don't think I'm gonna, I can get there. Devin Booker, if he does play, and he's good to go. He's perfectly fine. We can look at him. And Alan Williams is down to 5K, man. A very solid DVP matchup, so I think we can take a look at him as well. Won't be going anywhere else. Uh, no Jerry Eddy for me. No Derrick Jones. No Jared Dudley. That's as far as I go. Four deep on the Phoenix side. And the last game on the slate, the late night hammer game. Uh, the guy that you're going to have to beat a lot in tournaments if you don't play him is going to be James Harden. Uh, now, these guys aren't playing for much uh, either in the way of, you know, playoff position because they're kind of locked into that into that, uh, into that, that third seed the Houston, Houston Rockets are. So I don't know if you want to, you know, use that as a basis to fade Harden, uh, but he's a guy who comes to play. He's playing for, you know, the MVP. We just saw the monster game that Russell Westbrook had without Harden on the slate. Maybe Harden watched that game. It's like, yo, I'm going to go hard tomorrow too. But he does have that wrist issue that we got to be careful with. So I do like Harden some. Uh, Click Capella is a play that I, I kind of like. Pat Beverly at 4.9 is a play that I'm very interested in, as is. Lou Williams off of the bench at 5.4. On the Portland side, you've got to give strong consideration to Dane Lillard. Uh, he's priced at the 9.2. I think I can get there if I have to. Yusuf Nurkic, man, he's at 8K, and I don't, I don't like that. That's just too much. That's too much. I'd rather play CJ McCollum at 7.6. That's just too much for him. Ivory Camino at 4.5. If I do want to get a piece of the Portland front court, whether it's on the bench or with the starters, I think I can rock with uh, Ivory Camino there and maybe some Alan Crabb. Uh, for 4.3, very cheap price for him, a guy that can heat it up if he is called on. So the point total for this game is 228.5 is the highest point total on the slate. Houston Rockets are uh, implied to get 114 as uh, <clears throat> the, oh man, the Blazers are projected to get 114.3. So this is like a pick em game. There's, even, there's not even a favorite in this game. The game is in Portland at the Motor Center, so this, this, might be, this might be a bomb burner, baby. Well, this has been your DFS Jerusalem. Thank you so much for riding along with me, uh, breaking down uh, tonight's five-game NBA slate. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, this should be a midday mix at 3.30. I'm going to do my very best. My baby girl, she's got 
a, uh, a, a baseball practice tomorrow, and I've got to go there and check her out. Uh, first game is going to be on Saturday, so that's, that's pretty dope. I can't wait for that. And um, so uh, this just want to thank you all for being in the sweatshop, man. Thank you all that attended the Midday Mix earlier uh, yesterday yesterday afternoon. That was very nice. was able to really get some solid work done in there. And, of course, man, I remember, man, we, we all we all one family here on YouTube, man, working together, man. Shout out to everybody that has their shows, man. Uh, shout out to Vaughn Harris. Shout out to Cammy TL. Shout out to the homie. Uh, Gun Deck grabbed me on the show the other night. Shout out to uh, Money Mike and Kyle over at the Fantasy Phenom. Uh, shout out to everybody, man, that's doing their thing, man, and trying to bring you know real, honest DFS talk uh, to the regular, ordinary, everyday common man, just like me and you. That's what this is all about. If you're doing that, I don't care what you do. If you're selling lineups, if you fucking, as long as you got some analysis tied to that shit, I'm cool. As long as you as long as you analyze the game and you tell the truth when you do it, I don't give a fuck what you do. You are a friend of mine. It's all good. It's all good. So uh, if you would like to continue to support the show, uh, because you are supporting the show in its purest form by giving me a voice on YouTube. But if you want to further support the show, there is a box over here. It says support the show. Go ahead and click that box. Uh, also, you can go hit up the personal PayPal at SimmonsMaurice95 at Yahoo.com. And if you want to be a full-fledged member of the DFS Sweatshop, it is very simple, man. Go to the website at www.dfsweatshop.com. That is where you receive all of our tips and tricks and tutelage that is designed to turn you into a profitable daily fantasy sports player. And upon completion of your of your uh, of your uh, subscription, I will accompany you. I will I will walk you in, pull back the velvet rope, and allow you directly into the very best Facebook group online. It is the DFS Sweatshop Facebook VIP. So get in there. Uh, get with me, and the number one thing I want y'all to do is keep it 300.